People who work on the front lines of the addiction crisis in Oregon are worried about how drugs are changing and impacting the people using them. And they're talking about meth. More importantly, a more powerful meth that has hit the streets in recent years. And Liz, you've talked to experts about this. This is a real crisis for Oregon, isn't it? It really is. I talked to the Drug Enforcement Agency and I talked to police about how it's getting here. They told me that their investigators are finding cartels are the ones flooding the country with the supply. And while they profit off of those drugs, we're the ones paying the price. I'm a former meth addict. I used meth for 10 years. Mike Marshall knows firsthand how hard it is to stop using meth once you start. It re permanently rewires the brain. And I, when I, was using, I would go, like, I'd wake up one morning, like, I'm never doing that again. And I'd go three months without doing it. And then one night, I, you know, I'd have a couple cocktails, and the next thing I know, I'd be smoking meth. But almost exactly 15 years ago, he smoked for the last time. Now he dedicates his life to helping other people get out of the cycle of addiction through his organization, Organ Recovers. He says a lot has changed in the last 15 years, and not for the better. I um, am active in the Crystal Meth Anonymous community, right? There's a whole set of folks who are in recovery from meth, and we're all incredibly concerned because this is not the meth that we used to use, right? It's uh, almost immediately uh, creates psychosis. And he tells me it's gotten significantly cheaper. The meth of 15 years ago was, was a lot more expensive. I recently intervened with a friend who had relapsed, and I said, give me, give me your, your stuff. And he went and he got it was like the hope diamond of meth, and he put it in my, my palm, and he told me it was $40. Now, back in my day, um, it probably would have been $800. He's not the only one noticing more access to meth. Dr. Amanda Risser has Central City Concerns, helps people who are experiencing addiction in Portland, and has for many years. More people are using methamphetamines, which makes sense. It's less expensive. Um, it's... Um, more available. And the Portland Police Bureau tells me meth in Portland is more readily available than it has been in the past. It's much cheaper, and that's just market economics. That means it's everywhere. If the market's flooded, there's probably a lot more out there and probably a lot more users. Lieutenant Chris Lindsay oversees the Portland Police Narcotics and Organized Crime Unit. He tells me at some point, people started making a potent form of meth using pseudoephedrine or ephedrine, but more recently, cartels figured out a way to mass produce an equally strong meth by bringing back an old method. At some point, we don't know when, the Mexican cartels switched back to the P2P method. Lieutenant Lindsay explains that essentially means they're using different chemical compounds to produce the drug, with phenytopropanone as the primary precursor, or as it's more commonly known, P2P. Now he says pretty much all the meth tested here has been made that way. Using P2P, they've started creating higher quality meth. The meth we're seeing brought up is, you know, the past the fifth calendar year of 2021, the average um, purity was between 97 and 98 percent. But he tells me the problems for addicts don't stop there. You have this high quality meth out there again, but you also have a massive influx and usage of fentanyl. And so I would have to I would have to guess that the combination and or the cocktail of drugs um, could be what is fueling this erratic behavior. What happens is uh, these um, these chemicals that make the P2P uh, methamphetamine uh, uh, tend to have slightly different effects. Dr. Todd Corthis is the head of addiction medicine at OHSU. It has more psychosis and, and hallucinations and things like that. It just feels a little bit different, but the big difference is um, the the difference in risk of uh, mental health side effects. He agrees we're seeing more P2P meth in Oregon and it's more potent. Is this P2P meth actually causing a sort of permanent or lingering psychosis after use? We're still learning about this, um, but yes, there seems to be a, a little bit higher prevalence of mental health side effects of methamphetamine use from the P2P meth than the older meth. The chemical makeup of the P2P meth um, and also increased potency. So how and why is this meth being pushed up the West Coast and into American cities? For that answer, I went to the Drug Enforcement Agency. The cartels, um, it looks like they're finding a way to really mass produce this P2P meth. Why is that happening and why are we seeing such a push to get it into America right now? 
They, they're mass producing because all the cartels care about is making money. They're a money-making machine. They'll do whatever they need to do to make money. And this is a very good way for them to make a lot of money. The DEA tells me those chemicals come from China. They say they're then transported to Mexico, but the cartels take them to labs and make them into meth. They say then they smuggle them through the southwest border up into the states and then up the I-5 corridor, eventually coming to the Pacific Northwest. How is this getting across the border from Mexico to California? Any way it can, it comes by train, truck, car, plane, any person, any way possible, it's coming across the border. So what do we do now? Dr. Risser says she thinks we need more housing support, harm reduction services, and treatments that work. My main concern is that there are barriers to effective treatment. Marshall agrees. We have the second highest addiction rate. We rank last in access to treatment. But he says everyone can recover, and it's worth it. Because when you get into recovery, you um, become a better dad. You become a better sister, brother or sister. You become a better citizen. You become a better dog owner. You're just, your life improves exponentially. It doesn't mean that life isn't hard, but um, the challenges you face will be less difficult and easier to navigate if you um, have spent some time getting into recovery. We put a list of resources if you are struggling with addiction on coin.com. Give you a little context. According to the National Survey on Drug Use and Health, Oregon ranks first in the nation when it comes to percent of the population reporting meth use. That was in 2021. But Liz and Jeff, a little more context is worth noting. The DEA says the amount of meth seized in Oregon has actually been fairly consistent in recent years. And they say meth, not just by itself, but it wreaks havoc on the homeless situation. Right. That's what fuels the homeless situation, our criminal justice system. And the same act, they go into the state hospital, they come right out, it's a revolving door, it jams up our hospital beds. We're not gonna solve any of those problems until we solve this addiction crisis. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Liz, great reporting. Liz, thank you so much.